Boeing is trying to bring back their glory days. Once upon a time, they used to be titans of the space industry. Think McDonnell Douglas and North American Rockwell. But these days, they are hitting some big time snags. NASA's starting to get fed up of the Starliner's continued delays over the past six years. And while NASA's trying to salvage their commercial crew program, Boeing has been making some big mistakes. Dear NASA, enough is enough. Please pull the plug on Boeing Starliner. Find out more in today's episode of Alpha Tech. First off, let's take a look at Boeing CST-100 Starliner. Similar to other common U.S. capsules, the CST-100 spacecraft has a capsule with a truncated cone shape. It's a little bit larger than the Apollo Command Module and SpaceX Dragon 2, yet smaller than the next generation Orion under the development of Lockheed Martin. The capsule has a payload being up to seven passengers to LEO. For the inside, Boeing preferred making the design of both Starliner and Boeing's commercial aircraft, the 787 Dreamliner, in the uniform. It consists of a full range of manual controls and large displays that display a ton of crucial data. However, they are a bit redundant because the initial function of the capsule is just autonomous operation. The vehicle is supposed to be able to rendezvous and dock with the International Space Station by itself. Boeing pitched NASA on all this back in 2014. And for all intent and purpose, there are many modern features in Starliner's design. For instance, a completely weldless design with interlocking parts, 12 reusable command module thrusters for maneuvering, or a separate service module. One thing Starliner did have going for them that Dragon did not was reboost to the ISS. Boeing Starliner can perform altitude boost by robust aft-orienting thrusters in the service modules and Reboost plays a main role in the capability of independent access to the ISS for NASA. Without it, NASA would be in a weak spot with Russia looming in the background. With that in mind, NASA also stated that SpaceX was working on potential modifications to Dragon concerning capabilities of station Reboost to Crew Dragon to sharpen its competitive edge. With 13,000 kilograms of launch mass, Starliner sticks out with its modern features and pretty large crew capacity. And while that looks good on paper, the reality is starkly different. If NASA's endgame is to combine SpaceX's Crew Dragon and Boeing Starliner to realize their dreams of space exploration, they're in for a disappointment. It's safe to say that Crew Dragon is the fire extinguisher of NASA's money-burning woes caused by Starliner over the last six years. And the taxpayers start wondering whether the whole executive team over at Boeing just wants to milk as much money out of the project as possible. Let's take a look at how many failures the Boeing teams made with Starliner. First, in July 2018, an incident related to the leaking hypergolic propellant from the spacecraft happened while Boeing Starliner was undergoing tests in its abort systems. Before the first orbital test flight this year, Starliner flew once during the pad abort test in November 2019. Everything had gone according to plan until when the main parachutes deployed, only two rather than all three emerged from the capsule as it descended to the desert floor. The issue was still within the safety requirements of the system, according to NASA, but several years later, it turned out to be a big deal for both parties. One month later, in the first orbital flight test, they dropped the ball again, not with the parachutes, though. This time, they went to the wrong orbit. Specifically, it failed the capabilities and safety checks when its autonomous flight control system misfired shortly after launch, then drove the CST-100 to the wrong orbit instead of taking it to the ISS. Starliner's fate got a little brighter in the second test flight in 2022, when it was finally able to dock with the ISS. This had us thinking they might be able to take it to the next stage, the last planned test flight called the crude flight test. The public once more hoped their tax dollars were actually paying for something useful. Then this year, Boeing announced not just one, but two detected issues on their spacecraft. The first one relates to the wrong number of parachutes, which has been unresolved since 2019, and then this year, things get more complicated. The softlink used on the suspension line of Starliner's three main parachutes has a failure load limit that's lower than previously thought. It means those links aren't able to handle the load of Starliner if one chute fails, and that's a deal breaker for NASA. The second one gets even more serious. The P213 glass cloth tape that covers the wiring harnesses throughout the Starliner's capsule are too flammable, which can cause major fire problems throughout the entire ship. It's safe to say that after six years, NASA and the taxpayers are running out of patience. 
SpaceX's Crew Dragon has been delivering cargo to and from the ISS since 2012, and during the time between 2020 and now, SpaceX has done six crew missions to the ISS, whereas Boeing Starliner has done only one successful flight test, and that was after multiple delays. And then last month, they opted to bail on their next test indefinitely. And this wasn't a good look for NASA, who, under public pressure, finally decided to do a deep dive into the technical issues with the spacecraft on May 25th. Patricia Sanders, chair of a NASA safety panel, declared, Given the number of remaining challenges to certification of Starliner, we strongly encourage NASA to step back and take a measured look at the remaining body of work with respect to flying CFT. This actually should have happened several years ago, because as you may notice, for over half a decade, six years to be exact, NASA, an agency funded by taxpayers, has invested more than half a billion dollars on basically nothing. Now, a lot of folks see Starliner as a tax siphoning project rather than a worthwhile investment, so NASA might need to put other options on the table. It's not an exaggeration to call this project of Boeing a tax waster. Let's look at the initial expenditure that NASA spent for the development of Boeing. $4.2 billion in their 2014 contracts, which is way more than the $2.6 billion SpaceX got at the same time. According to a recent report by NASA's OIG, a Starliner seat cost NASA $90 million, which is $55 million more than on a SpaceX Crew Dragon, or even what NASA pays Roscosmos for Soyuz seats. After crunching the numbers, it's a safe bet that NASA would save a lot of its annual allocation if they just focus on only one company. And right now, SpaceX looks like the best candidate. But NASA still wants to keep two options available. Why do they want to do that? Well, the reason's pretty simple. Collaborating with Boeing through the commercial crew programs comes from the fear of the monopoly of just one company. Historical economics tell us that a monopoly plays a crucial role on the market as a whole. It means you have a complete dependency on just one supplier, no matter how well it is. And if something goes wrong, you have no backup. Basically, you're locked into a situation where you may end up paying a lot of money you don't have because there's no one else competing in the business. That might be what has kept NASA waiting for Boeing to fix Starliner for so long. So, should NASA bail on this and pull the plug on Boeing Starliner? The answer, yes, might be advocated by the majority of people on social media, based on calculations about how much money it's going to take to fix the ongoing mistakes of Starliner, and if that'll even improve anything. Replacing all that P213 cloth tape that's around the entire vehicle is just one example. In the case of fearing the dark monopolistic scenario we just broke down for you, there's still a lot of brighter candidates out there for NASA, especially in the dynamic competitive market we're currently living in. Dream Chaser is a perfect example. No one wants to miss out on that golden opportunity. Boeing has hit rock bottom. In less than a year, Boeing's reported expenses of $257 million for the astronaut spacecraft program Starliner. The shock brings the total program cost overrun to $1.4 billion, while the delays continue to persist. This massive figure is a financial disaster in the commercial aerospace industry, standing in stark contrast to SpaceX's Dragon, its competitor. Why is there such a cost overrun, and what's Elon's reaction about this? With that said, is Starliner ever going to get off the ground? Boeing, a prominent name in the aerospace industry, has been working to launch its Starliner spacecraft for several years now. Unfortunately, the journey's been riddled with persistent technical and engineering challenges, resulting in continuous delays for their inaugural crewed mission. These setbacks have become a recurring theme in the development of Starliner, forming a pattern of interruptions that have plagued the spacecraft's progress. The ambitious project has proven to be both challenging and financially demanding for Boeing, making the successful launch of Starliner's first crewed missions an elusive goal. Even more embarrassingly, on July 25th, as part of its quarterly earnings update, Boeing announced that the Starliner program incurred a loss of $257 million. This brings their total losses in the Starliner program to over a billion dollars. Since 2014, NASA awarded Boeing a nearly $5 billion fixed-price contract to develop Starliner, while SpaceX received $2.5 billion for a similarly capable spacecraft. At the time, Elon jokingly remarked that he should have made his bid more. In stark contrast to the cost-effectiveness and reusability of SpaceX's Dragon spacecraft, Starliner's proven to be a significant financial burden for Boeing. The company's total charges for this project amount to almost $1.5 billion as reported in its most recent annual and quarterly filings. 
Additionally, the programs experience losses nearly every year, with figures ranging anywhere from $57 million back in 2018 to $489 million in 2019. The recent announcement of the indefinite delay of the Starliner launch and the discovery of new issues with the spacecraft have contributed to further escalating the overrun costs. The aerospace giant blamed the impacts of the previously announced launch delay that both Boeing and NASA disclosed on June 1st for the colossal loss. This loss was the primary contributor to a $527 million deficit reported for its Defense, Space, and Security Business Unit in the quarter. Frankly, Starliner has seen little development. Instead, it's been characterized by these massive expenses. I wonder if they'll ever use this money wisely or if they've done anything worthwhile with such a massive amount of cash. Boeing's failures get even worse, especially considering the support they've received from SpaceX, a leading space exploration company in the world. Elon, who leads his own space exploration company, SpaceX, has provided his service in bringing Boeing Starliner closer to the stars. SpaceX provided its knowledge of crewed parachute systems to Boeing's and were happy to be helpful in any other ways, Musk said. Designing parachutes for orbital crewed spacecraft is much harder than it may seem, was a major challenge for SpaceX. Anyhow, Boeing should be grateful for this as SpaceX possesses extensive experience with their parachute system, which was indeed a genuinely challenging issue that took them quite a while to resolve. The path's been laid out for Starliner, though, and everything depends on Boeing's engineers as they have to find a way to rescue themselves from the complex technical situations they've created. In an earnings call, David Calhoun, the president and CEO of Boeing, stated, On Starliner, we're in lockstep with our customer. We prioritize safety, and we're taking whatever time is required. We're confident in that the team and committed to getting it right. However, he didn't provide any further details on the efforts being made or an estimate of the time needed. Honestly, it just seems like another excuse for their potential technical limitations. Throughout this spring, NASA and Boeing have been working towards a spacecraft launch that's scheduled for July. However, at the beginning of June, two significant issues emerged with Starliner. One involved soft links in the lines connecting the Starliner capsule to its parachutes, and the other problem pertained to a flammable P213 glass cloth tape found inside the spacecraft. Their program was considered on track when during a remote workshop this week, NASA officials provided the first crucial update on Starliner since they began addressing the problems. NASA's commercial crew program manager revealed that the Starliner program had stepped back to thoroughly review all aspects of flight preparation, including crewed missions, following a recommendation from NASA's Aerospace Safety Advisory Panel just before the recent incidents. Identifying these two serious issues so close to the spaceflight prompted NASA to conduct a more comprehensive evaluation of Starliner, attempting to determine if there's any other hidden issues within the spacecraft. On the NASA side, we really stepped back and looked at all aspects of flight preparation, Stitch said. This presents an immense challenge for Boeing, and they need time to finalize their plan. Also during the conference, Stitch revealed that NASA and Boeing immediately set to work on the solution. Collaborating with the parachute supplier Airborne, they addressed the issue with the softlinks. The engineering teams identified a new type of connecting hardware that met NASA's safety requirements. It appears that these new softlinks haven't been tested on site, and therefore, the necessary level of testing for certification hasn't yet been determined. Besides, Boeing technicians also removed panels from the inside of the Starliner spacecraft to address the flammable tape. This glass cloth tape was wrapped around the spacecraft's wire harness to protect them from friction during flight. NASA and Boeing have identified a non-flammable replacement for the tape, ensuring further safety enhancements for the spacecraft. We've been able to remove a lot of that tape, and that works progressing really well, Stitch said. He mentioned that about three pounds of tape have been removed from the Starliner so far. So, when will Starliner actually fly? The timeline for Boeing's Starliner spacecraft launch remains uncertain, according to the agency's program manager for commercial crew, Steve Stitch. During a media teleconference discussing SpaceX's forthcoming Crew-7 missions on Crew Dragon, Vollmer stated that they're not prepared to discuss a concrete launch opportunity for Starliner yet. He emphasized that they'll first address the technical issues before determining a suitable launch target in collaboration with the Boeing team. Given the ongoing delays and the lack of a definite launch schedule, it's now possible that Starliner's launch on an Atlas V rocket carrying NASA astronauts Suni Williams and Butch Wilmore on a test flight to the ISS might slip into next year. When NASA initially selected Boeing and SpaceX to provide crew transportation services to the space station nine years ago, Boeing was expected to deliver first for NASA. However, SpaceX has already completed six operational missions and is about to launch its seventh for NASA next month. NASA has already announced that SpaceX will conduct its Crew-8 mission for them in February or March of the following year. 
With the continuous uncertainty surrounding Starliner's launch, it's conceivable that SpaceX's Crew-9 mission may even fly before Boeing's first operational mission, Starliner-1. Despite these challenges, NASA remains committed to resolving the technical issues with Starliner and moving forward with its ambitious crewed missions to the ISS. You see the same problem with the SLS, the Space Launch System, of which Boeing's one of the manufacturers, which assuming it ever gets off the ground, is a beast of a rocket that simply isn't worth the price of admission. SpaceX is putting up spacecraft at a blistering rate and reusing launchers again and again. The SLS is years late, gonna cost $2 billion a launch, and plus the development costs. It's plagued by technical issues and throws away extremely valuable and potentially reusable components, like the recycled space shuttle engines. Frankly, it's just a ridiculous rocket. Basically, recycled space shuttle components are only vastly more expensive and completely disposable. It can lift a lot of mass, assuming it gets off the ground successfully. It's already six years late, and over $27 billion has been spent developing it. In conclusion, the development of Starliner has proven to be a complex and costly endeavor for Boeing. The company now has to grapple with the financial implications of these setbacks and work diligently to rectify the identified issues. As Boeing navigates through these difficult times, the global aerospace industry will be watching closely, waiting for the next chapter in the Starliner's journey. That's it for today's episode. Hope you enjoyed it and learned something new, and please let us know what you think in the comments below, because your feedback is very important to us and helps us make better videos for you to watch. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time. Goodbye.